Snow is right around the corner, and so that means it's time to perform my annual maintenance and prep of the snowblower. Now, if you don't already perform regular maintenance to your snowblower, stick around and I'll share with you some of the tips that I've used to keep this thing running for 15 years now. And over that decade and a half, this thing hasn't failed me yet, and it's still running strong. There's two main things that I do as part of my annual maintenance ritual. One is to change the spark plug, so we're going to cover that, and the other is to change the oil. Now every snowblower is a little different, but changing the spark plug on almost any one of them is pretty straightforward. Just look for the plug wire, go ahead and pull that bad boy off, and on the plug itself you'll usually see what type of plug that you need. In this case I have an E3.10, and so I think this was an E3 plug that I had put in last year, and this year I'm going to be putting in a Champion plug. Now. It's not really too important which brand that you use, and most packaging will tell you that this plug is compatible with other brands' model numbers or part numbers, so you can choose whichever one you want. So in this case, an E310 uh, from E3 as a manufacturer is compatible with an RJ17LM Champion plug, and so that's what I'm going to use this time. Now, changing your plug is what I recommend in order to help keep your snowblower running in tip-top shape. Uh, I recommend doing it at least once per season, or if you're using it more professionally or more frequently, about once every 100 runtime hours. Changing a plug on a snowblower is just like changing a plug on a car, except a lot easier because there's nothing in your way. Simply go ahead and put your socket on it, break it loose, unthread it. You can see this plug is a little sooty. Grab your new plug. Now, most new plugs come pre-gapped, so you can see here this one's already gapped, looks pretty good. And then I like to coat the threads of my plugs with anti-seize to make sure they come out well next season. Go ahead and install the new plug, thread right in. Make sure you thread it in by hand, you don't want to cross-thread this bad boy. Let it make contact, and though I'm a big fan of torquing things, for these plugs, usually I just do it by feel, until I feel the crush washer crush and make a good uh, tight fitting. And so that's usually once it makes contact plus about half a turn. So right there I can feel the crush washer uh, crushing and we're good to go. And that's it. Go ahead and put your plug wire back on and your plug is changed. Next let's get to the oil change. Now changing the oil in a snowblower isn't unlike changing the oil in a car. You got a couple main components. So you've got your drain point, you've got a fill point, and you've got a dipstick. Now I just pulled this thing out of storage and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire it up so that I can warm it up, get the oil circulated before I drain it and change it. But before I do that, I'm going to check the dipstick to make sure I actually have oil in it before I start it. Now, I haven't changed this oil since last year, so by checking the level now it lets me know, hey, did I lose any oil over the last season? My dipstick is easy to access right here, so we're going to go ahead and pull it out. And as you can see, the oil is clean and full, so I am safe to go ahead and start this. We'll just let it run for a little bit to warm up, get the oil circulated, then we'll shut it off, cool it down a little bit, and drain it. Now, in addition to lubricating your engine, engine oil also serves as a detergent, and it cleans and traps debris and soot and deposits within your motor. So it will degrade over time, and it will get dirty, so it's important to go ahead and change it at least once a season. Now, once a season is what I do because I don't have an especially large driveway or sidewalk, but if you use your snowblower more frequently, either professionally or have a lot of ground to cover, then I would suggest changing your engine oil about every 50 to 60 operational hours. Can't hurt, it's not very expensive, and it's just a good way to ensure that your snowblower stays running for a long time. I like to use Briggs & Stratton Full Synthetic 5W30 for my snowblower. I've been using this for a long time. Uh, it's lightweight, it's synthetic, so it's optimal in my opinion for the cold weather. Every snowblower is different, but for mine, in order to drain it, it's got this little tube back here and a cap. And so what you do is you simply unscrew this cap and drain the engine oil out. So we'll get it hand loose and get ready to remove it. You can see that the, the tube is going to probably end up spilling the oil onto the uh, body here. So I like to use some kind of funnel, in this case just a cut up piece of a Gatorade bottle, to help guide the oil away from the snowblower itself. Once it's done draining, we'll go ahead and cap it back off and tighten the cap. And wipe it down just a little bit to satisfy our OCD. Next, we'll pull the dipstick out, insert a clean funnel, and pour in the new oil. In my case, the crankcase takes about three quarters of a quart. Remove the funnel, 
reinsert your dipstick, making sure to tighten it down to properly check the oil level, pull it back out, and as you can see, we're pretty much right on the money. Perfect, good to go. Lastly, what I like to do before calling it quits for the season, getting everything ready, is one, I like to spray down the chute here with uh, silicone spray in order to help lubricate it up. I don't know how many of you have ever done the slushy snow only to have it bog up and stick down there. So this just helps it eject better. And then two, I'll use some white lithium grease on the various cables and joints, anything that moves. So white lithium grease is great. It's extremely waterproof, it's extremely temperature proof, and it's a great thing to have just to help lube up some of the things uh, on your snowblower. So let's get that done. Fire her up one last time to make sure she's good to go. And we'll let her run for a little bit and put her away. Wait for some snow. Hope you found this episode helpful. If you did, give it a like. Until the next time, this is Tom the Dilettante saying keep on tinkering and keep on learning. Take care of your shit while you're at it. Take care. What are y'all still doing here? Episode's over. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll, I'll make another one soon. I'll, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.